Hello everyone, Ruben here and today we're really happy to be bringing you an update on our flagship project, the E-Rex. Last week we had a look at the Rex B and how the field testing is going, but today we want to focus on what it still remains, our core development, our core technology. So if you want to know more about what's new, what's changed and when will it be available, stay tuned because this video is for you. So we are really excited because three years of hard work are coming to an end and the new E-Rex is nearly finished and in just three months we will be turning a whole new page in our breakthrough history. But just before we jump into what's new, let us have a look at what's remained the same. And for that I have here the third generation of E-Rex, which was the previous generation, versus the new E-Rex, which is this one right here. Similarities, they both boast in engines one-stroke technology with all the benefits that entails in terms of extremely low weight and extremely low vibration. They both have a post-piston configuration, four-cylinder, and they both have double output shaft allowing to couple a generator on one side and direct drive on the other, remaining true to our eclectic range extender vision. And that's about it in terms of similarities, because no matter how similar these two look, there's a world of difference in between the two. The first and most obvious one is where the previous E-Rex was 500 cubic centimeters, the new one is 700 cc. As you can see, even though this one is 40% larger in terms of displacement, size-wise, they are pretty much the same. The reason for this is our technology scales better the larger the displacement. In other words, the larger the engine, the more pronounced the weight and size differences and benefits they become. And again, it is not just size but also weight. In fact, this 700cc here is even lighter than the previous 500cc generation at only 38 kilograms. In other words, we're getting an extra 200cc while saving 5 kilograms. This is a testament of how hard our engineering team has worked on taking what it was a prototype into a serious production ready product. Another huge difference is the injection system, direct versus port, whereas on the previous generation we had port injection. On the new one we have a whole array of options, ranging from direct injection into the chamber, direct injection into the pre-chamber, making it active. Also we can have port injection for both hydrogen and gasoline. On the subject of combustion, we've gone from a more square combustion chamber to a more elongated combustion chamber. This means the engine goes from a more revvy, sporty kind of engine to a more efficient, slow engine in order to get the best efficiency and the lowest emissions possible. And talking about combustion, the new E-Rex incorporates state-of-the-art pre-chamber technology, allowing us to operate lean in order to meet the most stringent Euro 7 standards. And we've also integrated subsystems such as the high pressure pump for the fuel system, the scavenging pump, and more things we've done behind the scenes. In terms of manufacturing and assembly, we've looked at each individual part and we've made it simpler to both produce and assemble in order to get our engine ready for serious production. And there's still a lot more we could get into the detail, but I think you get the idea that it's not just a simple matter of going from 500cc to 700cc. These two are the same technologies, but they are a world apart in terms of technology advancements. Um, we are really, really looking forward to testing our new game changer. There were many tests we could not do on the previous version, where we were more focused on the mechanical aspect, the durability, and now on this one, where all those things are behind us, we're going to focus more on homologation for the emissions, optimization of consumption, and this is going to be a huge leap. And for all this is that we are convinced our new E-Rex represents a massive leap in terms of ultra-efficient power generation for both the range extender vehicles and the aeromobility sector. 